Okay. Okay, so we're ready to go. We'll bring them in and then I'll have you hand out the jury instructions, okay? Now I'm going to read 2.7 closing argument tomorrow. Okay, and all final 3.137 case to jury tomorrow. Okay? Yeah. Other than that, I'm going to read everything else. The defendant is present. All rise, jury entering. <laughs> All right, very good. Welcome back. Everyone have a seat. Um, before we begin, I need to apologize profusely to you all. I um, They should put me in a Snickers commercial because when I was looking at the clock, I knew it was almost 1 o'clock, and yet nonetheless, I said for everyone to be back here at 1.30. So um, I apologize. That was my error. I did not mean to give you all an expedited, super expedited lunch. And if ever in the future I've asked something unreasonable, don't be afraid to raise your hand and say, did you really mean to say we only have 20 minutes for lunch? It's fine. I won't get offended. Okay, so um, we are ready now to, uh, for me to read the final set of jury instructions to you. You all have been or will be provided a copy, which we're going to hand out now to you all to read along. And this will be your set of the jury instructions. So you need to keep those with your notes. You can't take them home tonight, but they will be for you to utilize. Um, and when you're listening to closing arguments tomorrow, they will be yours if you want to make notes, um, however you wish to utilize them. But they're your copy, okay? Very good. With that, we will begin. Members of the jury, I thank you for your attention during this trial. Please pay attention to the instruction I'm about to give you. Granville Ashanti Ritchie, the defendant in this case, has been accused of the crimes of murder in the first degree, sexual battery, victim less than 12, and defendant over 18, and aggravated child abuse. In considering the evidence, you should consider the possibility that although the evidence may not convince you that the defendant committed the main crimes of which he is accused, there may be evidence that he committed other acts that would constitute a lesser included crime or crimes. Therefore, if you decide that the main accusation has not been proved beyond a reasonable doubt, you will next need to decide if the defendant is guilty of any lesser included crime. The lesser crimes indicated in the definition of murder in the first degree are murder in the second degree, manslaughter, murder in the third degree. The lesser crimes included in the definition of sexual battery, victim less than 12, and defendant over 18 are lewd, it should be lewd or lascivious battery, victim less than 16, battery. The lesser crimes included in the definition of aggravated child abuse are child abuse and battery. In this case, Granville Ritchie is accused of murder in the first degree. Murder in the first degree includes the lesser crimes of murder in the second degree, manslaughter, and murder in the third degree, all of which are unlawful. A killing that is excusable or was committed by the use of justifiable deadly force is lawful. If you find Felicia Williams was killed by Granville Ritchie, you will then consider the circumstances surrounding the killing in deciding if the killing was murder in the first degree, or was murder in the second degree, or was manslaughter, or was murder in the third degree, or whether the killing was excusable or resulted from justifiable use of deadly force. The killing of a human being is justifiable homicide and lawful if necessarily done while resisting an attempt to murder or commit a felony upon the defendant or to commit a felony in any dwelling house in which the defendant was at the time of the killing. The killing of a human being is excusable and therefore lawful under any one of the following three circumstances. One, when the killing is committed by accident and misfortune and doing any lawful act by lawful means with usual ordinary caution and without any unlawful intent, or two, when the killing occurs by accident and misfortune and the heat of passion upon any sudden and sufficient provocation 
Or three, when the killing is committed by accident and misfortune resulting from a sudden combat, if a dangerous weapon is not used and the killing is not done in a cruel or unusual manner. Dangerous weapon is any weapon that, taking into account the manner in which it is used, is likely to produce death or great bodily harm. I now instruct you on the circumstances that must be proved before Granville Ritchie may be found guilty of murder in the first degree or any lesser included crime. There are two ways in which a person may be convicted of first degree murder. One is known as premeditated murder and the other is known as felony murder. To prove the crime of first degree premeditated murder, the state must prove the following three elements beyond a reasonable doubt. Number one, Felicia Williams is dead. And two, the death was caused by the criminal act of Granville Ritchie and three, there was a premeditated killing of Felicia Williams. An act includes a series of related actions arising from and performed pursuant to a single design or purpose. Killing with premeditation is killing after consciously deciding to do so. The decision must be present in the mind at the time of the killing. The law does not fix the exact period of time that must pass between the formation of the premeditated intent to kill and the killing. The period of time must be long enough to allow reflection by the defendant. The premeditated intent to kill must be formed before the killing. The question of premeditation is a question of fact to be determined by you from the evidence. It will be sufficient proof of premeditation if the circumstances of the killing and the conduct of the accused convince you beyond a reasonable doubt of the existence of premeditation at the time of killing. Felony murder, first degree. To prove the crime of first degree felony murder, the state must prove the following three elements beyond a reasonable doubt. Number one, Felicia Williams is dead. Two, while engaged in the commission or attempted commission of sexual battery, victim less than 12, the defendant over 18, and or aggravated child abuse, Granville Ritchie caused the death of Felicia Williams. And three, Gran Granville Ritchie was the person who actually killed Felicia Williams. In order to convict the defendant of first degree felony murder, it is not necessary for the state to prove that the defendant had a premeditated design or intent to kill. The crimes of sexual battery, victim less than 12, and defendant over 18, and aggravated child abuse are defined later in these instructions. Attempt to commit crime. In order to prove that the defendant attempted to commit the crimes of sexual battery, victim less than 12 and defendant over 18, and or aggravated child abuse, the state must prove the following two elements beyond a reasonable doubt. Number one, the defendant did some act toward committing the crimes of sexual battery, victim less than 12 and defendant over 18, and or aggravated child abuse that went beyond just thinking or talking about. Two, he would have committed the crime except that A, Someone prevented him from committing the crimes of sexual battery, victim less than 12, and defendant over 18, and or aggravated child abuse, or he failed. The crimes of sexual battery, victim less than 12, and defendant over 18, and aggravated child abuse are defined later in these instructions. To prove the crime of second degree murder, the state must prove the following three elements beyond a reasonable doubt. Number one, Felicia Williams is dead and two, the death was caused by the criminal act of Granville Ritchie, and three, there was an unlawful killing of Felicia Williams by an act eminently dangerous to another and demonstrating a depraved mind without regard for human life. An act includes a series of related actions arising from and performed pursuant to a single design or purpose. An act is eminently dangerous to another and demonstrating a depraved mind if it is an act or series of acts that one, a person of ordinary judgment would know is reasonably certain to kill or do serious bodily injury to another, and two, is done from ill will, hatred, spite, or an evil intent, and three, is of such a nature that the act itself indicates an indifference to human life. In order to convict of second degree murder, it is not necessary for the state to prove the defendant had an intent to cause death. To prove the crime of manslaughter, Lester's to count one, the state must prove the following two elements beyond a reasonable doubt. Number one, Felicia Williams is dead. Two, Granville Ritchie intentionally committed an act or acts that caused the death 
of Felicia Williams or the death of Felicia Williams was caused by the culpable negligence of Granville Ritchie. The defendant cannot be guilty of manslaughter by committing a merely negligent act or if the killing was either justifiable or excusable homicide, as I have previously instructed you. Each of us has a duty to act reasonably towards others. If there is a violation of that duty without any conscious intention to harm, that violation is negligence. In order to convict of manslaughter by act, it is not necessary for the state to prove that the defendant had an intent to cause death. Only an intent to commit an act that was not merely negligent, justified, or excusable, and which caused death. I will now define culpable negligence for you. Each of us has a duty to act reasonably toward others. If there is a violation of that duty without any conscious intention to harm, that violation is negligence. But culpable negligence is more than a failure to use ordinary care towards others. In order for negligence to be culpable, it must be gross and flagrant. Culpable negligence is a course of conduct showing reckless disregard of human life or of the safety of persons exposed to its dangerous effects <coughs> or such an entire want of care as to raise a presumption of a conscious indifference to consequences or which shows wantonness or recklessness or a grossly careless disregard for the safety and welfare, welfare of the public or such an indifference to the rights of others as is equivalent to an intentional violation of such rights. The negligent act or omission must have been committed with an utter disregard for the safety of others. Culpable negligence is consciously doing an act or following a course of conduct that the defendant must have known or reasonably should have known was likely to cause death or great bodily injury. <coughs> Felony murder, third degree, lesser is to count one. To prove the crime of third-degree felony murder, the state must prove the following three elements beyond a reasonable doubt. Number one, Felicia Williams is dead. Two, while engaged in the commission or the attempted commission of lewd or lascivious battery, victim less than 16, lesser is to count two, and or child abuse, lesser is to count three, Granville Ritchie caused the death of Felicia Williams. And three, Granville Ritchie was the person who actually killed Felicia Williams attempt to commit crime. In order to prove that the defendant attempted to commit the crimes of lewd or lascivious battery, victim less than 16, lesser is to count two, and or child abuse, lesser is to count three, the state must prove the following two elements beyond a reasonable doubt. One, the defendant did some act toward committing the crimes of lewd or lascivious battery, victim less than 16, lesser is to count two, and or child abuse, lesser is to count three, that went beyond just thinking or talking about it. Two, he would have committed the crime except that A, someone prevented him from committing the crimes of lewd or lascivious battery, victim less than 16, lesser is to count two, and or child abuse, lesser is to count three, or B, he failed. The crimes of lewd or lascivious battery, victim less than 16, lesser is to count two, and child abuse, lesser is to count three, are defined later in these instructions. Sexual battery, victim less than 12 years of age, defendant over 18. To prove the crime of sexual battery upon a person less than 12 years of age, defendant over 18, the state must prove the following three elements beyond a reasonable doubt. One, Granville, 1A, Granville Ritchie committed an act upon Felicia Williams in which the sexual organ of Granville Ritchie penetrated the vagina of Felicia Williams or B, Granville Ritchie committed an act upon Felicia Williams in which the vagina of Felicia Williams was penetrated by an object. Two, at the time of the offense, Felicia Williams was less than 12 years of age. Three, at the time of the offense, Granville Ritchie was 18 years of age or older. However, any act done for bona fide medical purposes is not a sexual battery. An object includes a finger. Consent of Felicia Williams is not a defense to the crime charge. Felicia Williams' lack of chastity is not a defense to the crime charge. Ignorance of Felicia Williams' age, Felicia Williams' misre misrepresentation of her age, or defendant's bona fide belief of Felicia Williams' age is not a defense to the crime charge. <coughs> Neuter lascivious battery, lessers to count two. To prove the crime of lewd or lascivious battery, the state must prove the following two elements beyond a reasonable doubt. Number one, 
Granville Ritchie encouraged, forced, or enticed Felicia Williams to engage in any act involving sexual activity. And two, at the time of the offense, Felicia Williams was less than 16 years of age. Sexual activity means the vaginal penetration by the sexual organ of another or the vaginal penetration of another by any other object. However, sexual activity does not include an act uh, done for a bona fide medical purpose. An object includes a finger. Neither Felicia Williams' lack of chastity nor Felicia Williams' consent is a defense to the crime charge. Consent means intelligent, knowing, and voluntary consent and does not include submission by coercion. Coercion means the use of exploitation, bribes, threats of force, or intimidation to gain cooperation or compliance. The defendant's ignorance of Felicia Williams' age or the defendant's bona fide belief of Felicia Williams' age is not a defense to the crime charge. Bona fide means genuine. Battery, lesser to count two. To prove the crime of battery, the state must prove the following element beyond a reasonable doubt. Number one, Granville Ritchie actually and intentionally touched or struck Felicia Williams against her will. Or two, Granville Ritchie intentionally caused bodily harm to Felicia Williams. Aggravated child abuse, count three. To prove the crime of aggravated child abuse, the state must prove the following two elements beyond a reasonable doubt. Number one. Granville Ritchie knowingly or willfully committed child abuse upon Felicia Williams and in so doing caused great bodily harm, permanent disability, or permanent disfigurement to Felicia Williams, and two, Felicia Williams was under the age of 18 years. Willfully means intentionally and purposely. Child abuse means the intentional infliction of physical or mental injury upon a child or an intentional act that could reasonably, reasonably be expected to result in physical or mental injury to a child. Child abuse, lesser as to count three. To prove the crime of child abuse, the state must prove the following two elements beyond a reasonable doubt. Number one, Granville Ritchie knowingly or willfully abused Felicia Williams by A, intentionally inflicting physical injury upon Felicia Williams, or B, committing an intentional act that could reasonably be expected to result in physical injury to Felicia Williams. And two, Felicia Williams was under the age of 18 years. Willfully means intentionally and purposely. Battery, lesser is to count three. To prove the crime of battery, the state must prove the following element beyond a reasonable doubt. Number one. Granville Ritchie actually and intentionally touched or struck Felicia Williams against her will, or two, Granville Ritchie intentionally caused bodily harm to Felicia Williams. Single defendant, multiple counts. A separate crime is charged in each count of the indictment, and although they have been tried together, each crime and the evidence applicable to it must be considered separately, and a separate verdict returned as to each. A finding of guilty or not guilty as to one crime must not affect your verdict as to the other crimes charged, except for legally interlocking counts, which I will now define for you. Legally interlocking counts. First degree murder under the theory of felony murder, count one, and sexual battery, victim less than 12, defendant over 18, count two, and aggravated child abuse, count three, are linked in that either sexual battery, victim less than 12, defendant over 18, or aggravated child abuse is an essential element of first degree felony murder. You should first consider the evidence applicable to sexual battery, victim less than 12, defendant over 18 in count two, and aggravated child abuse in count three. If you find both sexual battery, victim less than 12, defendant over 18, and aggravated child abuse have not been proved beyond a reasonable doubt, then you must find Granville Ritchie not guilty of first-degree murder under the theory of felony murder. However, you may still consider whether the evidence established beyond a reasonable doubt the crime of first-degree murder under the theory of premeditated murder or second-degree murder or manslaughter or third-degree murder and return a guilty verdict under such theory um, or for such offense. If, on the other hand, you find that either sexual battery, victim less than 12, defendant over 18 in count two, or aggravated child abuse in count three was proved beyond a reasonable doubt, you must then consider the evidence applicable to first-degree felony murder. 
a guilty verdict on either sexual battery, victim less than 12, defendant over 18 on count two, or aggravated child abuse on count three, does not require a guilty verdict of first degree murder under the theory of felony murder. You should find Granville Ritchie guilty of first degree murder under the theory of felony murder only if you find all the elements of that crime including the essential elements of either sexual battery, victim less than 12, defendant over 18, or aggravated child abuse were proved beyond a reasonable doubt. If you find beyond a reasonable doubt that Granville Ritchie is guilty of first-degree murder, you must indicate in your verdict form as provided there herein whether you find him guilty under the theory of first-degree premeditated murder or guilty under the theory of first-degree felony murder or guilty under both theories. Similarly, third degree felony murder, lesser count one, and lewd or lascivious battery, victim less than 16, lesser count two, and child abuse, lesser count three, are linked in that either lewd or lascivious battery, victim less than 16, lesser is to count two, or child abuse, lesser is to count three, is an essential element of third degree felony murder, lesser count one. In considering third-degree felony murder, lesser count one, you should first consider the evidence applicable to lewd or lascivious battery, victim less than 16, lesser count two, and child abuse, lesser count three. If you find both lewd or lascivious battery, victim less than 16, lesser count two, and child abuse, lesser count three, have not been proved beyond a reasonable doubt, then you must find Granville Ritchie not guilty of third-degree felony murder, lesser as to count one. If, on the other hand, you find that either lewd or lascivious battery, victim less than 16, lesser count 2, or child abuse, lesser count 3, was proved beyond a reasonable doubt, you must then consider the evidence applicable to third-degree felony murder, lesser count 1. A guilty verdict on either lewd or lascivious battery, victim less than 16, lesser count 2, or child abuse, lesser count 3, does not require a guilty verdict of third-degree felony murder, lesser count 1. You should find Granville Ritchie guilty of third-degree felony murder, lesser count one, only if you find all the elements of that crime, including the essential elements of either lewd or lascivious battery, victim less than 16, lesser count two, or child abuse, lesser count three, were proved beyond a reasonable doubt. The defendant has entered a plea of not guilty. This means you must presume or believe the defendant is innocent. The presumption stays with the defendant as to each material allegation in the indictment through each stage of the trial, unless it has been overcome by the evidence to the exclusion of and beyond a reasonable doubt. To overcome the defendant's presumption of innocence, the state has the burden of proving the crime with which the defendant is charged was committed, and the defendant is the person who committed the crime. The defendant is not required to present evidence or prove anything. Whenever the words reasonable doubt are used, you must consider the following. A reasonable doubt is not a mere possible doubt, a speculative, imaginary, or forced doubt. Such a doubt must not influence you to return a verdict of not guilty if you have an abiding conviction of guilt. On the other hand, if after carefully considering, comparing, and weighing all of the evidence, there is not an abiding conviction of guilt, or if having a conviction, it is one which is not stable, but one which wavers and vacillates, then the charge is not proved beyond every reasonable doubt, and you must find the defendant not guilty because the doubt is reasonable. It is to the evidence introduced in this trial and to it alone that you are to look for that proof. A reasonable doubt as to the guilt of the defendant may arise from the evidence, the conflict in the evidence, or the lack of evidence. If you have a reasonable doubt, you should find the defendant not guilty. If you have no reasonable doubt, you should find the defendant guilty. It is up to you to decide what evidence is reliable. You should use your common sense in deciding which is the best evidence and which evidence should not be relied upon in considering your verdict. You may find some of the evidence not reliable or less reliable than other evidence. You should consider how the witnesses acted as well as what they said. Some things you should consider are, one, the witness seemed to have an opportunity to see and know the things about which the witness testified. Two, did the witness seem to have an accurate memory? Three, was the witness, witness honest and straightforward in answering the attorney's questions? Four, did the witness have some interest in how the case should be decided? Five, does the witness's testimony agree with the other testimony and other evidence in the case? 
Six, had any pressure or threat been used against the witness that affected the truth of the witness's testimony? Seven, did the witness at some other time make a statement that is inconsistent with the testimony he or she gave in court? Eight, has the witness been offered or received any money, preferred treatment, or other benefit in order to get the witness to testify? Whether the state has met its burden of proof does not depend upon the number of witnesses it has called or upon the number of exhibits it has offered, but instead upon the nature and quality of the evidence presented. The fact that a witness is employed in law enforcement does not mean that his or her testimony deserves more or less consideration than that of any other witness. Expert witnesses are like other witnesses with one exception. The law permits an expert witness to give their opinion. However, an expert's opinion is reliable only when given on a subject about which you believe them to be an expert. Like other witnesses, you may believe or disbelieve all or any part of an expert's testimony. You have heard the testimony of a child. No witness is disqualified just because of age. There is no precise age that determines whether a witness may testify. The critical consideration is not the witness's age, but whether the witness understands the difference between what is true and what is not true, and understands the duty to tell the truth. It is entirely proper for a lawyer to talk to a witness about what testimony the witness would give if called to the courtroom. The witness should not be discredited by talking to a lawyer about his or her testimony. You may rely upon your own conclusion about the credibility of any witness. A juror may believe or disbelieve all or any part of the evidence or the testimony of any witness. The Constitution requires the state to prove its accusations against the defendant. It is not necessary for the defendant to disprove anything, nor is the defendant required to prove his innocence. It is up to the state to prove the defendant's guilt by evidence. The defendant exercised a fundamental right by choosing not to be a witness in this case. You must not view this as an admission of guilt or be influenced in any way by his decision. No juror should ever be concerned that the defendant did or did not take the witness stand to give testimony in the case. A statement claimed to have been made by the defendant outside of court has been placed before you. Such a statement should always be considered with caution and be weighed with great care to make certain it was freely and voluntarily made. Therefore, you must determine from the evidence that the defendant's alleged statement was knowingly, voluntarily, and freely made. In making this determination, you should consider the total circumstances, including but not limited to, one, whether when the defendant made the statement he had been threatened in order to get him to make it, and two, whether anyone had promised him anything in order to get him to make it. If you conclude the defendant's out-of-court statement was not freely and voluntarily made, you should disregard it. There are some general rules that apply to your discussion. You must follow these rules in order to return a lawful verdict. Number one, you must follow the law as it is set out in these instructions. If you fail to follow the law, your verdict will be a miscarriage of justice. There is no reason for failing to follow the law in this case. All of us are depending upon you to make a wise and legal decision in this matter. Two, this case must be decided only upon the evidence that you have heard from the testimony of the witnesses and have seen in the form of the exhibits and evidence and these instructions. Three, this case must not be decided for or against anyone because you feel sorry for anyone or are angry at anyone. Four, remember the lawyers are not on trial. Your feelings about them should not influence your decision in this case. Five, your duty is to determine if the defendant has been proven guilty or not in accord with the law. Six, whatever verdict you render must be unanimous. That is, each juror must agree to the same verdict. Seven, your verdict should not be influenced by feelings of prejudice, bias, or sympathy. Your verdict must be based on the evidence and on the law contained in these instructions. Deciding a verdict is exclusively your job. I cannot participate in that decision in any way. Please disregard anything I may have said or done that made you think I preferred one verdict over another. You may find the defendant guilty as charged in the indictment or guilty of such lesser included crime as the evidence may justify or not guilty. If you return a verdict of guilty, it should be for the highest offense which has been proven beyond a reasonable doubt. If you find that no offense has been proven beyond a reasonable doubt, then of course your verdict must be not guilty. The verdict must be unanimous. That is, all of you must agree to the same verdict. Only one verdict may be returned as to the crimes charged. 
The verdict must be in writing, and for your convenience, the necessary verdict form has been prepared for you. And it reads as follows. In the Circuit Court of the 13th Judicial Circuit of the State of Florida and in Fort Hillsborough County Criminal Justice Division, State of Florida versus Granville Ashanti Ritchie, case number 14 CF 11992, Division, Trial Division 1, Verdict Form. We, the jury, find as follows as to count one of the charge. Check only A, B, C, D, or E, plus any special findings as to this count. A, the defendant is guilty of first-degree murder as charged. And check only one, two, or three. One, the killing was premeditated murder. Or two, the killing was felony murder based on a finding of guilty of either sexual battery, victim less than 12, defendant over 18 in count two, or aggravated child abuse in count three, or three, the killing was premeditated murder and felony murder based on a finding of guilty of either sexual battery, victim less than 12, defendant over 18 in count two, or aggravated child abuse in count three. B, the defendant is guilty of second degree murder, a lesser offense. C, the defendant is guilty of manslaughter, a lesser offense. D, the defendant is guilty of felony murder in the third degree, a lesser offense, based on a finding of guilty of either lewd or lascivious battery, victim less than 16, lesser count two, or child abuse, lesser count three. E, the defendant is not guilty. Leave the jury find as follows as to count two of the charge. Check only A, B, C, or D as to this count. A, the defendant is guilty of sexual battery, victim less than 12 years of age as charged. B, the defendant is guilty of lewd or lascivious battery, victim less than 16, a lesser offense. C, the defendant is guilty of battery, a lesser offense. D, the defendant is not guilty. And just so you know, on count two on A, I'm going to have to go in and add victim less than 12 years of age, defendant over 18. I'll make that change. We, the jury, find as follows as to count three of the charge. Check only A, B, C, or D as to this count. The defendant is guilty of aggravated child abuse as charged. B, the defendant is guilty of child abuse, a lesser offense. C, the defendant is guilty of battery, a lesser offense. D, the defendant is not guilty. So say we all dated this blank day of September 2019, and then there's a signature line for the foreperson of the jury to sign the verdict. Okay, so what I want you to do is keep those instructions with your notes. The bailiff will collect them. And let's talk about tomorrow. Um, as I've told you a couple times now, um, when you come back tomorrow morning at 9 a.m., we're going to go directly into our closing arguments by the lawyers. Once that happens, I will have just one final instruction to read to you, and then you all will begin your deliberations. As we have discussed, um, if the jury is not finished deliberating by a reasonable close of business time tomorrow, the jury will have to be sequestered. So I would ask that you all bring with you just a small bag that in the event you have to be sequestered that you can take with you overnight. Um, the sheriff has already made the arrangements for a hotel for you all to stay. Now, you will not, if you are sequestered, you won't have any internet access, no television access, and I do believe that um, reading materials may be permitted depending upon what they are. So please don't bring any murder mysteries, okay? <laughs> um, anything, anything, but anything related to criminal law, if you're going to bring reading materials. Just so you know, um, I may have to, if you are sequestered, I may have to have the bailiffs check exactly what your reading material is. Um, so that's essentially what will happen tomorrow in the event you have to be sequestered. The sheriff's office will transport you all to the hotel. They'll send you to your rooms, and um, there is the possibility that if you wish to make a phone call to um, home, that you can do that, but you do have to be supervised by a sheriff. So just so you know, please don't get offended. It's not that we don't trust you. It's just that when a jury is sequestered, it means sequestered from all outside communication because once you begin deliberating a verdict, no one outside of the jury room can have any contact with you whatsoever. So, all right? Um, anything else from the state or defense before I release the jury? No, you haven't. Okay. Um, 
So again, remember, when you go home tonight, don't listen to, watch, read any news accounts related to this case. Don't do any independent inquiry on your own, and don't speak to anyone about the case. All right? Yes, ma'am. What happens to the alternates? Well, we'll talk about that tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. You're, antici you're anticipating. Very clever. All right. Very good. Okay. We'll talk about that tomorrow. Okay. Okay? Okay. Very good. We'll see you all tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. All rise. Jury exiting. Okay, very good. Jury's left the courtroom. Um, we need to watch the video, so let's just take a quick comfort break of a couple minutes, and then I gave the disc back to the state, so maybe we can get Ms. Blevins to help run the... Okay. All right, I'll be back in uh, five minutes. And um, any further objections to the jury instructions? Other than no, those previous just the ones meetings. to the previous one. Okay, very good. All right, see you on a few. Okay. Your Honor, I'm, I may, yeah, you know, Mr. Hernandez is primary on that this sure. part of it, so I may excuse myself to go yep. work on my post. You are. You're excused. Thank you, Okay. Thank you.